In this video we're going to be republishing uh, HTML data over MQTT uh, using Node-RED and I'm going to use uh, airline flight arrivals as uh, an example. Now currently the way people get information is to use the the web and the web uses the HTTP protocol so if you want something like flight arrivals, bus arrival, train arrival information then you're going to be using HTTP to connect to a web server to receive that information. However, some type of information like flight arrivals is more suitable to a publish and subscribe protocol like MQTT rather than the request response protocol like HTTP. And the aim of this video is to show you how to take a, a web page publishing using HTTP and republish that, that same data over MQTT and receive that data using an MQTT client. Now, I did do an earlier video uh, where I used Python to republish uh, the data. In this video, I'm going to be using Node-RED to republish the data. So this is a, a normal interaction. We've got a user talks to a web server using HTTP. And the problem with the HTTP protocol is that w when the information changes on here, the only way the user can see that inf information that's changed is to refresh the web page. Now that's okay for a single user, but if you've got thousands of users connecting to this, this web server, uh, constant refreshing the page, then it results in lots of traffic and each time it, they refresh the page they get the entire page worth of data. So what we're going to do is to replace our user with a republishing client. This is going to be Node-RED this time rather than the Python. We're going to pull in the data from the web server and then we're going to publish that data onto an MQTT broker and you can then receive that data using uh, an MQTT client and you could also use um, MQTT over web sockets so you can still use a browser to receive that and I have done a video on that and I'll put a link in the description below to that to that video and the Node-RED republishing client is only going to publish changes so if the data hasn't changed then it won't be publishing anything to the broker. Okay so our Node-RED flow is going to read the data from a web page or a website and what I've done is I've actually copied the airline data onto my, my local drive and I'll make that available and the idea of that is really to not to load the airline web server when you're actually doing testing you don't need to uh, all it is a web page so I've just taken it and I've copied it onto the disk and I instead of reading it from the web server I read it from the, the local disk now the script also will take data from the, from a live website you just have to change the um, the wiring and I'll show you how to do that when uh, we look at the flow. So it then processes the data and basically looks for changes and then it republishes the data over MQTT. It filters it by flight number so the, it's, it's publishing on the topics it's publishing on are the flight numbers and I say it only publishes changes. Okay, here's our flow and it starts off here with an inject node. Now I've got two paths through this. I've got this path through here which actually queries the, the web server and I've got this path through here which uses the uh, the files, the, the save files. So in testing you'd use this path here and when it's live you'd be using this path here. So let me take you first through this path here. So it starts with an inject node and this inject node is triggering it all off and it's going to inject every minute. So what we're going to do is query the the web server every minute. This is the HTTP request uh, node and you can find it under the functions. It's not where I expected to find it here. And all we need to configure here is the address of the web server and that goes in here. Now I've actually taken it out. I, I want to keep that uh, private so you don't actually everyone go and use the same airline server and I say the airlines will be different in the the page they return and so you'll have to modify the the flow to cater for your your particular airline but as I say if you if you use the stored data that I'll make available then you don't need to make any changes at all you can you can see it all working from the from the stored data so it just issues a get request to the URL which you put in here 
and it retrieves the web page. It passes the web page on to the HTML, HTML uh, node. This is one of these nodes here. And this node here is configured to extract for using the selector TR, which is the, the table row selector again. Uh, your airline website or whatever you're trying to retrieve will structure the data differently so you may have to change that and the output is the text content of the elements and we're going to send a single message containing an array it then passes the data onto the function node now the function node does all the work it extracts the data from the HTML page and it uh, structures it based on the flight number it also checks whether the data has changed from the the last scan and if it has changed then it publishes it out onto the MQTT broker based on the on the flight number and I'll show you the function node in a bit more detail in a second I just want to run it through first and show you the, the results and I've just got a debug node here connected to here to see what we're sending out to the MQTT broker okay so let's start our flow going so we just click on the inject node you can see the HTTP request is going and you can see the data is received here and this is the sorry the data is going out and you can see here it's flight is from Belfast the airline is this and the flight number is this and the time is there and there's a, a comment there now it's sending it out to the MQTT broker based on the airline number Oh, sorry the flight number which is this flight number here and I'll show you that on the MQTD broker itself so here's our MQTD broker a mosquito broker and you can see here it's received a publish from the test client which is the client the node red client that I'm using and it's f on the topic flights followed by the flight number you can see all the different flight numbers here and here is the MQTT client you can see here it's uh, called test client and that's what you saw when I showed you the console on the mosquito broker now what you normally do is you'd use the, the data that's in the stored in the files now what I've done there is I've done the same thing I've requested the web page then I've stored the web page on disk and I've stored them as one HTML two HTML so one is the first minute two is the second minute three is the third minute and I've got an hour's worth of data on there that you can use so I just wire that into the function node and this function node really all it is doing is the organizing the the files so it's got a little counter so it counts one two three four appends it uh, with HTML for the file name and it passes that file name there message dot file name into the the next function and the file function retrieves that file name from the disk and then it passes it back into the HTML node and it goes down here like we saw before so this replaces this okay so let's clear it and let's run it again and you can see exactly the the same result except this is not live data anymore this is stored data now what I want to do to finish off is to show you a bit more detail of the function node that uh, does most of the work so to see what it's got to do what I'm going to do is to rewire this and I'm going to remove that and I'm going to put it into here I want to see what's coming out of here this node here so let's deploy it and let's start it and you can see here now what you can do is you can drill down to look at the data in much more detail and what I when I showed you this node here I said what comes out of here is an array of objects so this is the ones here so if I if I click here you can see I've got lots of arrays here 0 to 9 this is one array but it's structured in 10 so 10 to 19 all the way down to here and these are all the different flights and if I open one of these up 
you can see this is the way the data is structured here. Now you need to do this when you're testing because you need to know what you need to extract from this data. So here I've got arriving from flight number scheduled and details. That's the structure of my data. You can see here's the data here. Now you use this information to create your function. So what I've got to do is I've got to loop through all the elements of this array and I've got to extract this data from it. And if I click on this here, you can see you get more information. Very useful, the debugging node. Okay, so let's clear that and rewire it back to where it's supposed to be. And I'll show you the function node now in a bit more detail. I'll put the function node out into Notepad Plus where we can see it a bit better than in the node red screen. And we start off here with the context object. And what we need to do is we need to know whether the data has changed from one sample to the next sample. So we need a way of storing it and we're going to store it in the context object. I load the message payload into a variable called data and I've set another array variable data out to blank. We log the number of total records and you can see that on the console and this is just for information. And now we loop through the array. And what we're doing now, the array, it's an array, array of strings and what we need to do is strip out the white space characters, the backslash R and the new line characters backslash N. And so we do that, we split the string into another array based on the new line character and now we need to go through that array and we need to extract the elements and what we're going to extract from that array is the airline the flight number the time and the comment and the the from and you can see that down here and we store that into another object temp data from temp data airline etc we also set our topic to equal to the flight number because we're going to publish the data on flight number. We set the out topic to flights plus topic. You saw that earlier on when I showed you the screenshot of the console. We're publishing in the flights flight number. Now we create the message object and the topic we set to T out, which is this one here and the payload we sent to the temp data which is this what we collected here. Now we check if we've actually got this and we've got it stored so we, we go through our stored object and we see if we've already got the data for this topic and if we've got the data for this topic then we check to see whether the data has changed and this is here and I've left the print statements in here or the log statements and I've just commented them out so you might want to uncomment this to see how it works. And then we drop our message object into another array called data out. Now we're going to send, we're going to send off to the MQTT publish node. We're going to send an array, a, array of objects, and this is because because it's going to publish multiple messages. And we see that down here, we're going to return data out, but data out we're going to return in array. So we could have uh, initially uh, over two hundred message objects in this array and we send it off to the MQTT object, sorry, the MQTT node, and it will publish all 300 messages one after the other. And here we just set our context object again, we store our data so we can remember it for the next time. And a simple log message, and we log the number of messages we've actually sent there. So that's it. That's our function node. That's the one that does all the work. It extracts the data from the web page. It splits it up into topic and it creates messages based on the topic and it sends it off to the MQTT node. Now what gets passed on into this MQTT publish node is an array of objects, array of message objects. And notice I haven't split up the, I haven't converted the data, the, the payload into JSON format. The MQTT node seems to do that anyway, so I just pass the object into the MQTT node and that takes care of the, the formatting and publishes it. And let's just show you, I've got a, a Python client here that I've subscribed to the, the topics and I'll show you the output of that. 
is the Python client. You can see it's subscribed to flight slash wildcard. And you can see here it's telling me that the data for these flight numbers hasn't changed. And I scroll all the way down, find something that has changed. And here we've got a flight here that's changed, and you can see the information there the from, the airline, the flight number, etc. And here's the Node Red console, and you can see here I process 1.html, that's the first file, the first stored file. I process 291 records, and I publish 288. I process the second file, this time I've got 375, and I publish 266. I process the third file and I've got 375, this time I only published 5 because remember we're only publishing changes so obviously not, nothing really changed between this this one and, and this one and then I processed the fourth file and 375 records in and I only published 9 and I stopped it there okay that brings us to the end of the video if you've got comments on the video then please leave them below if you like the video then use the like button below and if you want to be notified of new videos to the channel, then you can always subscribe. And if you are a user of social media and you'd like to share it on social media, then feel free. Until next time, goodbye.